Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, and welcome to our global prayer revival. Uh, this is a uh, the middle of our seventh week that we are broadcasting this program. Uh, what a privilege it is to uh, represent God's kingdom through this medium, this format. Uh, here we are joined by three of my good friends from around the world. Uh, we have Minister Katrina Banks, who is down in Mississippi, down in the deep south, the Delta. Uh, we have uh, Evangelist Bidluck Awuga, my, my newest friend. Uh, Evangelist is in Nigeria. And then we have a good buddy of mine from junior high school, old football teammate, uh, Pastor James Lewis. Um I would like for each of you to take a moment to introduce yourselves. But first, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, and then Pastor Terry Tigdillo joins us <laughs> from Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome, sir. I wanted to go over one of my favorite scriptures before I ask uh, if I good luck to bring us a uh, a couple of verses of a song. And this is Psalm number 91. All so familiar, but it's one that I just really love. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Um, let me just mute somebody here. There we go. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings of thou trust. His trust shall be the shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, a habitation. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under their feet because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. Hallelujah. He shall come upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask God to give a special blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Lord. Uh, evangelist, evangelist, please, sir. Please give us a couple right. verses. God, God bless you so much. Uh, I want to praise the Lord. I want you to wave your hand to God Almighty. Just wave your hand to God Almighty. I appreciate the King of all kings and the Lord of Lords. I appreciate the everlasting Father, the unchangeable, change the light on tribe of Judea, the mountain matter. Call him that name, you know how to call him the best. The one that gave you life. Thank you, Father. Father Thank in you, heaven, I will love you. We lift your name in our dear. May your kingdom. Be established in our nation as your people. We declare a mighty word. 
area. In fact, I went to high school with David. We played on the same football team, American football, and uh, also in the same uh, honors corral group when we were junior, senior. And uh, so I've known David for a long time. And right now I am an elder in my church. I'm, I, I don't serve in the office of pastor. Um, although elders in my church are pastoral. And I also work full time as a social worker. I have my master's degree in Christian apologetics from Liberty University. I'm working on writing a book right now uh, that addresses some of the challenges facing 
young people in particular uh, as they uh, explore their faith and wrestle with their faith and um, decide what they believe and why they believe it. And I'm writing a book to try to help them with that. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at at this time. Um, and I, I love this uh, worldwide prayer revival. I, I treasure it when God's people get together. People from every background, every part of the world, um, every culture, language. Um, that's how it is in heaven. That's how it is in Revelation 5. And that's how it is here. So Amen. that's me, I guess, in a nutshell. So I've got a scripture today. Would you want me to do that now? Go ahead. Yes, yeah. sir. Go ahead. Okay. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus uh, is bringing teaching to his listeners that they've never heard before. Um, his teaching was a radical new teaching. It was a radical love. And uh, partway through it, in Matthew chapter 6, he gives us what's called the, the Lord's Prayer. And it's, and it's interesting uh, what, what he says after that. And I want to talk about that for just a minute or two after I'm done reading. Therefore, pray in this manner. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us so that we will not Yield to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom is yours, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And he goes on to Amen. say, For if you forgive others for Amen. their trespasses, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others for their trespasses, mm -hmm. then neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces so that they will appear to people to fast. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to people to fast. Mm -hmm. So that your father in heaven will see you. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you greatly. Um, you know, what I find interesting is, is that he emphasized this matter of forgiveness. And, and part of the issue in that day, the, the rabbis, the teachers of, of that culture would argue with each other about the matter of forgiveness. Some said, uh, you know, if a person says they're sorry and you forgive them and then they go do it again, then, then that means they weren't really sorry. So you don't have to forgive them at all. Other teachers said, no, give them about seven times. If, if somebody sins against you and you forgive them and then they go out and do it again, forgive them again until seven times. If they've done it seven times, then you know they're not really sincere. So, so then you don't have to. Uh oh, James. Sure. That when when people uh, sin against us, and they need forgiveness, that we are offering that forgiveness to them. Forgiveness is an incredibly powerful weapon for the kingdom of God. When we offer that forgiveness in the same way that God offers us forgiveness, even though we've sinned against him so many times and we've come to him and, and his blood has washed us clean from those sins. And he's, and he's forgiven us time and time again as an example to us to forgive others. And so we must offer that forgiveness and not, uh, hold these things against people and try to get revenge against people. And that's, that's really the core definition of forgiveness. I had a hard time 
wrapping my head around the whole matter of forgiveness for a long time. Um, but I came to realize that forgiveness in the Bible originally was a financial term. If somebody had a debt, if you owed them money or if you loaned them a cow or, or something like that, um, then they owed you. And if they didn't pay you back, that you could actually have the judge and some guards go down to their house and make them give you things to pay them back. You could even sell them into slavery and, and use that money to pay yourself back. It was a severe uh, culture of retribution and payback. And Jesus said, uh-uh, none of that. No more trying to get payback. He didn't say don't pursue justice. The Bible teaches us to pursue justice, but do not pursue revenge. Take the revenge out of your heart. Revenge belongs to God. Pursue justice, but offer forgiveness. Always be ready to offer forgiveness. And in the same way, Jesus says, you reflect your Father who is in heaven. And, and I believe the Lord put that on my heart to talk about today. It's an incredible, powerful testimony when we genuinely forgive our enemies and we pray for them. We pursue justice, but we do not pursue revenge. We do not pursue payback. And when we get a hold of this and when we practice this, it's, it's consistent with our prayers. It's consistent with our faith and God's forgiveness for us. And that's the word of God for today from me. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Very, very important. Very, very important. Uh, you know, especially I'm thinking about all the racism that seems to be boiling up right now across the world. Uh, it's always been here. And it's always looked like this. It's just now it's becoming transparent. It's always been this way. In fact, uh, Black folks have been, have been uh, calling out have been speaking out to, about this brutality that's been coming that's been happening in our communities and it's just now being able to uh come to the light you know we've had spurts of it but now you see all the protesting going on because folks are really tired of what's been happening but what james i hear you saying brother you said it so eloquently is that no matter what side of the fence you're on God is demanding that we forgive our brothers and sisters. And, and that's critical. That's critical. And sometimes it's a hard spot to be in. You know, when I look at Jonah, right? Jonah, he didn't want to forgive the Assyrians right, for all that they had done to his people. But God still demanded that he go up there and do what he was supposed to do. You know, and that's, that's the critical piece, James. We have to hear what God says do. We have to do what God tells us to do. And we, and we have to be compliant with it. You know, and, and the results really fall into his lap after that. And part of that, part of that is forgiveness. I thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, Minister Katrina, Minister Katrina, could you um, please uh, give us, uh, take us to the throne of God with prayer, please? Yes. Father God, we thank you again for another day. You allowed us to see your God. Lord, I thank you for who you are. Lord, I thank you for being God Almighty. Lord, I thank you for being all powerful, almighty, all knowing, omnipotent. Lord, I thank you, God, for being a just, kind, and loving God. Lord, we just thank you this morning because you're worthy of the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, I thank you for yeah. this time of fellowship that you have allowed us to see and to come today. Lord, I hope that something that we say today touches and resonates someone's heart, oh God, so that it may change lives. Lord, so that it may be an inspiration to someone. And Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be living vessels that you can work through us. And I ask for the Holy Spirit to come in, oh God, and to have its way today. Lord, I just mm -hmm. thank you, Lord. And as we approach and we took uh, the topic of forgiveness we started talking about forgiveness lord help us to open our hearts individually mm -hmm. and if it's some if someone we need to forgive help us to forgive and lord help this world to forgive and help us to know as christians it's not our job to seek revenge 
it's your God. And you say the battle is the Lord and it's not ours. But God, we know victory belongs to you. And for that, we say thank you, God. Lord, and we just love you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. We love you. We love you, we love you Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your precious son, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Terry, Pastor Terry, uh, I can't help but check what you in your robe down there in the Hattiesburg. <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah. minus four. Minus four. <laughs> Woo, that's cold. I still can't. What, the, what is that? That's Celsius. So what is that, about 30 Fahrenheit days? What does that work out to be? Yeah, it's around that. Around that, yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, would you please, you, you you really blew my mind, James, when Pastor Terry was talking about uh, 400 schools were looted and burned to the ground. Uh, people took advantage of the COVID-19. That blew my mind. Then you told me that white farmers are being murdered because uh, based upon the apartheid, I might be putting words in your mouth now, based upon the apartheid, now the blacks are coming to take over their property. They're coming to take over their property and they're killing the farmers, which is yes. wrong. Um, right. And so, you know, I mean, you this is, this type, this thing is going on I was talking with somebody the day. The devil is all over this world. It's really amazing. Exactly. It's amazing. And so uh, I'm not going to say any more. Pastor Terry, could you please uh, enlighten us some more and just go with the Holy Spirit, whatever you would like to share with us, please. Uh, greetings, uh, our new guest, uh, uh, Elder James. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm speaking from Johannesburg. Uh, I represent a church called Turn to the Lord Ministries. You can find me on Facebook. The Lord, one thing the Lord uh, asked me to share today is about love. And if you go through John 15, 13, okay, and let me just read this portion of scripture. John 15, verse 13. And the Lord is speaking. And here... And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friend. If you are my friend, and if you obey me, I no longer call you a servant because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends. And since I have told you everything my father told me, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you give you ask for using my name and i command you to love each other okay now it's this is a lot speaking and he made it he made it quite if if you listen to the scripture properly he emphasized that love and he's talking about his father and what his father, his father is built with love. And Jesus is built with love. And even if he said in John 3, 16, for God to love, you know, that he gave his only begotten son. Now, to sacrifice your son as, as a natural person, we all won't, we can't do that. Now, think about it. How much of love that he had for us, that he sent him as a man to suffer in this world, know the temptations that he's been through, experience what the heartaches that he's seen, seeing his, his friend uh, uh, dead. And then, you know, so he's been through all the emotions. He knows that the, everything that we're going through, he suffered persecution. He suffered everything that we're going through, what we're going through now. As you say, it was always there from biblical time right till now. Then you may ask the question, what is love? Love is willing to sacrifice for the good of others, okay? Love is patient. The, bigger, the, 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 the famous chapter about love gives us one of the most eloquent description of love ever written. And people say, what, 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 must I love another person? But uh, as a child of God, 
and also being a Christian, it comes with certain expectations. One of them is that we love one another. You can never call yourself, uh, yourself a child of God when you don't love another. So irrespective of whatever is going through on earth at the moment, and there's chaos, there's chaos in every, almost in every country there is chaos currently, because the devil has said he will devour. If you allow him, he's gonna take control. We have choices, and even the Lord says, blessing or curses, choose life. He gave us choices. He gave you a choice now to also to say, let me tell you how to love. And we need to understand that irrespective, there's a lot of hatred at the moment. And I put, a, I put something on Facebook the other day. Not every black person is a bad person. Not every white person is a bad person. You are gonna get some that are radical that may do things that are not uh, acceptable. You might take, uh, find some that will not do exactly to what he has appointed for or what he chose. If you ask a doctor now, a doctor takes a, a, a vow or an oath, okay? Just likewise, the police officers do the same to serve. Now, you understand, you know, everybody is going to do it totally because there are going to be weak, weak ones around, okay? So we need to understand that without love, you're worthless. You need to understand. And everybody, let me tell you something, in our makeup and God made us, he gave us everything, our desires, our love. So we have it in us. We are made up in the image of God. So if God is love and we made it in, in, in his image, how can we, we start to not take this seriously? And I like the idea, but I started with, with forgiveness. Without forgiveness, you're wasting your time. You need to start forgiving one another and start loving one another for crying out loud. You know, we need to get, stop, we, we have everything, anger. Do not sin in your anger. You understand? So love is the key. The greatest love is shown when, what, what, when Jesus went on the cross. That's the greatest love that he could die for me and you. Yet we are so sinners and we are ungrateful. We are totally ungrateful for what he has done. And watching, watching that movie, The Passion of Christ, and every time I watch it, I, tear, I burst into tears. And that is not even one-tenth of what he has actually been and the portrayal in the movie. It was even worse than that. But yet he still tells in the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. But let me tell you something. Like I might, as I said a week, bef a week before, my, my sister was murdered, okay, six years ago. I had a lot of anger in me. And even in the last court case in the, in, in the courtroom, that the, the judge had to get polices around me. And being a pastor and being a man of God, I was very, very angry. Because I, we have a nature, nature in us, because I miss my baby sister. And I had to then, and the Lord says, you need to start to forgive. And I started to forgive. Yes, I have got a master's in, in theology, and I've been preaching for a long time, but end of the day, we still, falter and fail sometimes. And then you brush yourself and say, Lord, forgive me. You see, so yes, there's times where we need to re-understand, reassess our lives, right? And the thing is, if you think about, yeah, a few, number one, forgiveness, right? If you think about it, the gifts that comes from love are many, they are few. Number one is forgiveness. Number two, having patience. Number three, kindness. Number four, love for the truth. Number five, love for justice. Number six, love for the best in a person. Number seven, loyalty at any cost. Number eight, belief in a person. No matter what, mm. love does not allow mm. for. Number one, jealousy. Mm. Number two, envy. Number three, mm. pride. Number four, a haughty spirit. Number five, selfishness. Number six, rudeness. Number seven, a demand for one's own way. Number eight, irritability. And number nine, grudges. We need to understand you cannot have the other as, as eight and nine aspects if you have love. Love Amen. conquers all. We need to start loving one another Irrespective yes, of what color the person is, what culture he comes from, what creed he comes from. And yes, we are a minority in our country. 
And yes, we similar to what you guys are have, having in America. We go through the same situations, but because we are of pests of nature, and we, from a young age, we are taught that do not, as a Hindu, do not do harm to another. Mm. And we believe that every religion practices good. Don't condemn and criticize and hate that person because he's not of your kind. Sow him seeds of love. And that seeds of love will grow and he will see your nature and he will follow you. As, as, as a child of God and as a man of God, we need to understand love is the greatest of all. And it's for a reason why the Lord said that. It's for a reason Amen. the greatest of all. Islam. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Thank you, man. That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for helping us. That's that's really beautiful. Thank you, sir. You know, one of the things that uh, I've been teaching about whenever I have an opportunity um, is as we get older, you know, the love that we have for God should be displayed, right? Right. Um, and and what I'm trying to point to is our tongue. I'm trying to point to our tongue. You know, our, the love we have for Jesus should come out of our mouths and the way that we communicate with one another. By no means am I nowhere where I need to be, but certainly, certainly, we should all, like, I'm 53. As we get older and more experienced, and I'm saying what I'm about to say now, we should learn how to use our best words with people. We should think about what we're going to say before we say it. We should not be spouting off in our emotions, right? We should be able to think. As we get older, we get more wisdom, we get more knowledge, we get more experience, we get more information out of this word, right? You got master's degrees here. People are learning it. We're learning more about God from professors that are very studious in one or two subjects, spend their whole lives in one or two subjects. You know, we're getting all this information. We should be able to control our tongues. And, and not only that, but our parents, our parents and the generation ahead of us, because you're 70 or 80 doesn't give you the right to spout off. That's where you should be able to control yourself even more. Just because you're your 70 to 80 doesn't mean now I get to say whatever I want to say, whatever on my mind. No, sir. No, ma'am. You should be relating to people in love. You should be relating to people as Jesus would relate to people. Right now, I mean, he used some sharpness sometimes, but he thought about it. He didn't just spout off and start going off on people. Okay, I don't know where all that came from. <laughs> but it must probably need it. Somebody needed to hear that. Uh, uh, Evangelist, good luck. I uh, would like uh, for us to jump into prayer. Let's go, let's do a round, go around the table and pray. I'm trying to unlock your mute here. And uh, let's pray. I'd like to start out with uh, Evangelist, good luck. And then Brother James. Uh, Sister Katrina, Minister Katrina, and then Pastor Terry. Uh, let's pray. Uh, whatever's on your heart, I was thinking about the homeless today. I think about the homeless and the hungry. That's what's on my heart today. But whatever's on your heart, let's pray. Evangelist, good luck. Uh, Elder James, Minister Katrina, and Pastor Terry. Our Lord God Almighty, the King of all kings and the Lord of lords, we bow before mm -hmm. your holy throne, the one us upon the throne, and make it the earth is true. We thank you, Father. And if we are presenting our soul, spirit, and body on you. We know without you we can do nothing. That is as we spread out the goodness of you in all the earth, as you have told us you will always be with us in our age. I am passing on the word of you in all the souls that are listening to us and in all the souls that are soon listening to us. Father, let their soul receive light in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the same I'm sending to the bottomless baby. Oh, those that have no father, no 
That is speak for them. They don't have anyone to speak for them. I am asking you, God, go ahead and speak for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. That the provision, make provision of all for them. Don't have anyone to give them apart from people so that they can give. Please begin to do it now. Yeah. Touch the heart of many that they will come and give to the mind and soul and the life of these ones that are still without parents. I ask, Lord, go ahead and be with them. That they are also bring all the nation, those who are hungry, those who have been crying unto you in the street, it, it, under the bridge, that many have been crying, sleeping on, on, on the highway. That I am asking them. Please visit yeah. them. Visit them. Visit them. Bless them with a miracle, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. I know you told us, Lord, that you can make a rich man even from the dust, John. Daddy, you can also make them a rich from the dust. Daddy, you can also make them a rich man from the dust pain. I am asking, Lord, please lift them up. Lift them up and bless them. Send them their destiny helpers. Send them their destiny helpers. That it rename yeah. them or not. That it says, I don't like the name I am bearing. Jabez looked at the God that created him. He said, This is not the man of God. Man. This is not what God is saying about me. And Jabez cried to you, Lord. And he said, Lord, take my name and enlarge my I wanted to enlighten the ghost of those that are in the street right now, right upon you. Those that are saying, Lord, when will you visit me? Those that are crying, Lord, when, you, when will this hardship be over? Those that are in their homes, cry also, oh Lord. Visit them, oh Lord. There are many, there are many, there are many, mm -hmm. there are many in London. There are many in every part of the countries of the world. Visit them, Lord. I just want mm. to visit them. Let them experience a divine dimension so that they will know you are God, that you mm. are in their life, that they are carrying your image. That when I look at them on the street, I find out that you are God you are the one inside them. I look at you in the I look at your image inside and I begin to shake yes, Lord, and I ask you give them a, a very big mansion that the world will know that you God can raise someone from the dust. You can raise someone from the dust. Do it, Lord, for I know you God. Daddy, I am also praying for all the whole pastors in the world, those who are eating from hand to mouth, those who have no one to help them. Daddy, remember they are doing your work. Remember when there is nothing in my heart, I said, Lord, it is you I need. And you are the one yeah. to only me in, yeah. in the world. He are many others. There are others who are preaching your gospel in the spirit and the truth. Visit them on Lord. Visit them on Lord. Visit us on Lord. Let us begin to see the efficacy of your power in our life. In our ministry, let people begin to see the reason why you are calling in our life. And it, let them know that you are the king that owns us. Let there be meaningful life. That people will look into it. Let there be things that people will see and say, yes, yeah, their God is God. But uh, let there be things that people will look at it and they say, we will serve this God. Then they go out and do it in the life of all, all the ministers, all the life of pastors, the life of all the reverend, the life of all the good. Remember you told me that silver and gold belongs to you. Give it to your children and let them rejoice. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Yes, Heavenly Father, you, you, you see those who are in despair. 
Mm -hmm. those who are bound by substance addiction, Lord. Mm. Those who are tormented by their mental illnesses, Lord. Mm -hmm. Those who are under the, the power of dark forces, Lord. To the point where their, their family is not allowing them to stay with them, where they are living in shelters or on the streets or wherever they can. Lord, you, you said that you hear the, the cry of the desperate. The Lord is nigh to those who have a broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Lord, would you, first of all, touch your people, those who are truly yours, who are putting uh, saving faith in you, Lord, who are, who are desperate during this time of the COVID-19 crisis. Lord, would you lift them up out of the, out of the, the miry clay, Lord, and set their feet on a solid rock. Lord, those who are driven by doubt and, and fear and confusion, Lord, would you make yourself clear to them and give, give them a clear mind, clear direction. Lord, those who are not yours yet, Lord, who are, who, those who are in that pit of despair, who, are, who feel marginalized, who feel apart from society, Lord, would you reach out to them? Would you show your people, Lord, show us? Make it clear to us how we can reach out to them effectively. Show them your love so that they may have faith in you. And that you might put their feet on a solid rock, Lord. You anoint and empower your people to do this. That we will not ignore or forget the poorest of the poor. Just as you did not ignore or forget us, Lord. I ask this in the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you when we come approaching your throne of grace. Lord, we come uh, praying to you for our brothers and sisters who are in need today. Lord, we have people who are hungry, Lord. And they're, they're not only hungry for food, but they're hungry for you, oh God. They're searching for something desperate in their soul. Lord, we ask you to help us to, to reach out to them and let them know that God loves them. Lord, let them know that there's something out there that you're able to fill that void when they're hungry. Not only can you give them physical food, but Lord, you said that you are the bread of life. Lord, you bring life and water water when we're thirsty and, and give us feed us when we're hungry a uh, 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 water that will never run dry oh god we ask you that we meet them at their need that we're able to go to them lord and not only that you told us to feed the hungry oh god you said for when i was hungry you gave me food and when i was thirsty you gave me drink and when i was a stranger you welcome me in, oh God. Help us to be that beacon and that light, oh God, that we can feed and go out and help us not to be selfish. Help us not to hoard you. Help us not to hoard your love. Help us not to hoard your, hoard your goodness. Help us to share, oh God, because you put us as disciples in this world. You told us to go out, Lord, and that we can minister and to spread your word. Help us to be light in this darkness, Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for the power that you have given us. And not only that, oh, God, we ask you to help us to begin to walk in authority. Lord, you gave us the power to bind things. We ask you to bind the spirit of poverty that is among your people, oh, God, because your fa our father is rich in houses and land. And, Lord, you own the cattle on a thousand, on a thousand, uh, the cattle on a thousand hills. Oh, God, so we know that it's ours because we're you, we, we, you made us in your image, oh, God. And that this world of desire, not only this earthly riches, but Lord, but heavenly riches. And we say thank you and we claim it in the name of Jesus. We claim it in all authority, Lord, and we walk in authority. And we say thank you, God, in advance for the things that you've already done and the things that you're going to do. And Lord, we believe in your power. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we say it, it is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. Most gracious God, dear Heavenly Father, as we gather today as a family, Lord, and mm -hmm. as you heard your servants pray and as a standing agreement, you said, if two agree concerning Hallelujah. anything, I'll be done. And Lord, as we Hallelujah. come together, Heavenly Father, and we pray, especially like these cold nights right now in our winter nights, Lord. We pray for the Hallelujah. homeless, Lord, that, Lord, you'll meet them at their needs, Lord. And I pray right now, Lord, as we are feeling cold indoors, Lord, and I just can't imagine how they are suffering out there, Lord. You, I pray Jesus. right now, Lord, that you'll open that door, you'll open that mm. shelter for them, Lord, that they will direct them to the right parts, Lord, direct them to the right church, Lord, that the church doors may be open to them, Lord, the community center must be open to them, Lord, even the people of authority mm. must see the need of its people. And I pray, Lord, that, Lord, even this disease at this moment, Lord, wait, when it's cold, it actually makes it worse, and our numbers have increased for this COVID-19. And even the schools are now open and we're getting schools are suddenly closing because the educators are getting sick and the children are getting sick. And I pray, Lord, let your angels, Lord, I ask you to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out your angels at the four corners of this, of this planet, Lord, right now. You are creator. You are ultimate. And we ask you right now to sanctify and glorify, we glorify and sanctify thy holy name. You are holy to be praised. You are gracious, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We heal to your to everything that you have for us, Lord. We surrender all to you, Lord. And we ask you with a humble hearts, Lord. And as servants of God and as men of God, Lord, and women of God, we stand in agreement right now that our prayers Amen. will not return void. And we also pray for healing. You say healing is a children's bread. Will a parent grant stone to a child when it asks for bread? Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, meet that need for that child, Lord. Meet that need for that parent, Lord. Meet that need for whoever has need right now, Lord. In whichever way, whichever is everybody, any person that's listening to this cast right now, Lord, and any person that's listening to YouTube right now, right now Lord, that, Lord, they will touch and the healing powers may flow. And I know, Lord, we serve a God. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a dead God. It's alive and well. And he's going to listen. And he's going to do as we pray and we surrender. And as, Lord, forgive us if we not loved another neighbor or not, lo not loved another person. Forgive us, Lord. Teach us more to love. Teach us more to forgive. And teach us more to be caring, Lord. In Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, also for the research team, the doctors, and also the medical staff to taking the risk and be right there in the forefront of the pandemic. <clears throat> I ask you, Lord, anoint their hands, Lord. Wash them and cleanse them with that precious blood of Jesus. Let the angels yes. camp around them, Lord. And I come against the evil one. I come against you, Satan. We have no power in our friends, our families, our churches, our loved ones in and around our countries, our neighboring states, our neighboring countries, I ask you that finances may be released to any areas of the poor countries that are suffering right now, or this pandemic. I ask you, the rich countries, the, the first world countries, to start giving to the third world countries and do not hold back. The money is nothing, but the, the, the supplies are required. In Jesus' name we pray, one much thanksgiving, amen. 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. Amen. I, I had to get a shout out to my mother. Uh, she's been on the line with us for seven weeks and two days now. Uh, so, I, mother, thank you very much. She's been there every single time. Thank you. And as we talk about love, the one person on this earth who has showed me unconditional love from day one, all the way through, in spite of all the ugliness I've been through, all the valleys, all the shadows of death I walked through, everything I've been through in my life, the highs and the lows, she's always been that consistent love. You know, you know how it is. You have sons and daughters. You know how it is. You know how it is. It's love. No matter what, I, hey, you can't help it. And that's what my mother has demonstrated to me. Um, and she just pointed out in the comment section, she said, 
the love chapter, which you went pointed to, Pastor Terry. Uh, and so I want to I want to just give a, a little uh, a little, read a little bit of this, and then Pastor Flomo, we're going to come to you. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I have, can remove mountains and have not charity, I have nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity inviteth not, env- envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, there's they, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Hmm, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me read that again. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also I am known. And now, uh, by this faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is Charity, love, love. Hallelujah. Thank you. Pastor Flomo. Woo. Pastor Flomo. I met Pastor oh, Flomo uh, through my buddy James, uh, uh, James Ruark here. They are part of the same uh, network of uh, churches across the world. Hope I said that correctly. And uh, so Pastor James linked me up with Pastor Flomo in Liberia. Uh, by the way, Pastor James ministers all across the world. He has been all around the world in his lifetime. It's, he has a special focus in South Africa, Johannesburg even, and, and then also India, and also India. So uh, I would ask that you would, you know, connect with Brother James. Uh, he's a great resource, a great brother. Uh, and then Pastor Flomo, please, sir, we want to give you an opportunity to share the word of the Lord. I just ask that you would... Uh, give us a bit, a couple points, and let's keep it moving. Thank you, sir. Amen. <clears throat> well, I come, I just want to bless God to be on the platform, though I came a bit late. Uh, Brother James, I just want to say hi. Thank you. Well, I want us to just to touch a bit of uh, something, because with all that is going around the world, we have to see it in another way that uh, God is doing something. We may not understand what God is about to unveil. They will look in the book of Isaiah chapter 65. In chapter 65. For behold, I create new heaven and the new earth, and the former should not be remembered not come into mm. mind. But ye, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, Jerusalem the rejoicing and all people a joy. The world is a, a point of confusion, definitely confusion. I, the church, the body of Christ can understand what's happening just in the trickle of an eye. Our churches was told to kind of close down, and of course, we closed down the building, but we were we kept praying, kept praying at home, praying online. I, the political setting in the, in the in the secular world, 
companies get out of nowhere, everything starts shutting and uh, people started losing jobs and this, that, 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 this pandemic, people who were moving health, this one about sick. I uh, we see it at hospitals around the world fill up. I uh, see airlines travel and other things, like everything just in that trickle of an eye came to a standstill. No That's one right. understands what is going on. And of mm -hmm. course, we are human. So I ask, what, what is going on? Yeah. Though uh, we won't understand a lot of things that we can't understand now, but later we would understand because God is doing something, I believe, for his own glory. That he will show to the world that he's God Almighty and mm. he's about to do a new thing. I looking at the racial thing across the globe. Everyone is standing up. I, 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 I for this, I standing against this racist act, division. Humanity, you have the upper class, you have the lower class, you have the poor people, you have the rich nation. There's so much that God has put on this earth that no one should even go to bed hungry. Why? Mm. And even the body of Christ, the church itself, in the church itself, as believers, I, yes, we are one another's keeper. Uh, no one should ask, but whether I'm, am I my brother keeper? Like King and Abel, there are some people, some believers, God, I mean, Christians, God is asking you, have you considered one of my servant down there? And someone said, well, that's none of my business. I'm taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Of course, someone will say that. But God, like I, God is doing a new thing. Like you found now, I, the platform, a lot of platforms have been created to address the issue, to speak on these issues. And, uh, and just like that around the world. But as we go along, just one thing mm -hmm. I want us to remember that God is taking us well, into a new direction wherein we see things in a greater, uh, greater, greater, greater sense, greater picture of what God is, what God wants to do. That those who have been sitting by and just complacent, everything is fine because one is fine with you, it is fine with everybody. That's not the case. God is concerned about changing something somewhere, making something new for some people who have been praying along the way, along the years, for the many years they have been praying and trusting God. And God is saying to us, he's about to do a new thing. Mm -hmm. A new thing in the world. In the medical field, I, like I, we are still praying scientists, medical scientists are not being able to come up with a, a, specific, a specific answer as to this viral, what actually it is. We're getting mixed information, this like this, it's like that, it's like that, but there's nothing different. They say something today, another day, they say another thing, it's like this, let's do this, let's do this. And the whole world is at the point of confusion. But get this clear. God is saying he's about to change, to do change, to reset the entire, I mean, to reset the, the, the world. We see, we see a bigger mm. picture of God. Reset. That those who have rejected God over the years deny Him. Mm -hmm. Who is God by way? By their own effort, the thing that the work that they have, the physical material that they have been able to accumulate, it is by their own effort, but no. Everything that has been acquired wealth is comes from God. God is a provision of wealth. Even the nations that are so blessed, now our big brother, United States, everything they so God Christ. Around the world, God first. So God is saying to us, He's about, behold, I'm about to create a new heaven and a new, a new earth to bring about everything new that men, men, that there will be equality. Mm. That we will see each other as God's mm. creation, appreciate each other. No matter the color of our skin, no matter our geographical locations. I may be in Africa, you are in the USA, that's fine. But we are all God's creation. We are all God's people. Amen. We are equally Amen. equal. Amen. There is no black, no white, no Jews, no Gentile. We become one. Amen. Amen. 
We are children of God. That's God's purpose for us, that we be one. We be concerned about what is going on. Like we pray here day and night. We have some about we have friends across there. Uh, in Liberia, the case may not is not that worse per se. Uh, what happening? What God is doing? We also don't understand. But uh, you go into our marketplaces, it's crowded. It's crowded. You see people crowded, crowded. And uh, people are moving. You don't see much of a help. I said this person is this, this person is down, and God is just moving. And I'm quite sure at, at, the, at, the, at the appropriate time, this whole thing is going to subside. And then we will want to look at, at the story, read the story that, yes, at this time, they were like this. And at this point in time, this is what God did. At this time, they were right. like this, and God resettled it this way. And then now we can see God. I uh, hence work, we can see how he's moving around the world, how he's doing things, how he's going to be changing things, and, uh, and uh, how things are going to be better. And it's going to be for the good of humanity. That's a good thing about it. That those who have mind of hatred, those who have half, 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 half shots of mind of, uh, of, 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 of putting him on into classes, that this one, no, this not my type, we are not of the same type because of this, no. Everyone across the world will look at humanity, will look at human being, God's creation, for whom, which of oh God, this world was created to enjoy the beauty of God's work, the, 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 the blessings that God has put on this earth for the good of man, that everyone will have an equal share, that everyone will learn to appreciate God for what God is able to do. In the life of the churches, definitely God is about to do a new thing. God is forming a new alliance, bringing people together. People together to pray together, reason together, that, that those who are strong, that the strong one will help the weaker one to lift them up. That those who have the ability to do certain things, that uh, they will be able to share, look at the uh look at the, at the uh, what you can say the grassroots churches here in africa called the grassroots churches those churches that are of, of low standard as you when they call it they have nothing but they have the mind to serve they have mind serving god they are reaching out to their own kind of people with the gospel that someone i uh, up there can can look down and say yes i can partner with this uh with this brother i can partner with this sister i can partner with this ministry and whatever we will go wants me to do and we go into it fully because god wants to do a new thing a new thing on this earth Amen. yes and that we will know how to relate to each other we'll learn to appreciate each other because god has given us in fact the versatile of gifts i brother 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 david he's gifted in that certain things i the brother james i sister tina uh she's gifted in certain things my dear i Brother from Nigeria, can evangelist, the good luck. He's gifted in anything. My brother from South Africa, Ram, Pastor Ram, he's gifted in anything. And uh, we can now put this, our, I mean, varieties of gifts together for the glory of God and lift up each of the banner of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So let's see Thank God you, in that direction as that God is leading us so that we can know that God is about to do new things. Just new. Let's start to picture that in our mind. In Jesus' name. Good. Jesus' name. Good. Very good. Very good message. Thank you, sir. Reset. Reset. I'm gonna that's the word I'm gonna focus on for the rest of this day, maybe this week. Reset. Reset. God has reset this earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? He slipped it. Just like you said, in a, in a moment's notice, everything stopped. And life as we knew it in a moment's notice changed. It's just boom. You know, I mean, I think about General Motors, who just got out in the same state that we're in, down the way here, a couple of miles, a couple hundred miles. General Motors stopped making cars because of this thing, right? I mean, they, they halted their assembly line. The meat processing company stopped for a while, right? I mean, things just got reset. So good work. Thank you, brother. Uh, I'm thinking uh, we're running out of time here, brothers and sisters. So please, I want to give everybody an opportunity to share. Please, 
uh, keep your words uh, concise and to the point. Uh, Minister Katrina, Minister Katrina, I know you have a word that you want to share, an encouraging word that you want to share with the folks. Uh, I want you all to know that this is a strong woman of God. Uh, she's been with the Lord all her life. Since day one, when she was able to come outside her mama's arms, she was at the church. I promise you. I know her family well. Uh, so she's always been there. Uh, I know, you know, we all have our moments that we do what we do, but she's always been there. I've never seen Katrina not at church all her life. So I praise God for your testimony. Hallelujah to his name. I was just going to piggyback on when you said about reset, and it's so important that that is such a thing in this time, what has happened, that God has allowed not only the world to reset, but us to reset individually, because you just look at families. Families had got, you know, they didn't sit down and talk together. You know, everybody was this. Right. Thank <laughs> he you. Allowed you to reset. You were able, people were able to get to know their children. People were able to get to know their spouse. People were able mm. to get to know, you know, because you could be in the house together and you're upstairs, they're this way, this, they're this way. You don't even see each other all day. But God allowed this to happen so that we could reset. We could reset with families. We could reset with our spouses. We could reset our lives. And not only that, you had, it made you sit there and reset with yourself because you were able to sit and say, you know what? This time that I took doing this, let me let me see what God has for me because that's what happened to me in my life. I had to reset and I had to ask him, God, what do you have me to do? Because I know you called me, but I'm not living to my best potential. I, mm. I'm not doing the best that I can mm. for you. I'm not witnessing Jesus. like I should for you. The church is not doing what they should do because we're stuck inside the four walls. But now we have to go outside because we are the church and it's not this building. So now we have to find new ways to minister. So I think the reset has been a blessing because it allowed us to reset on some things that we need to reset in life. Not only our families, our, 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 our ministries, all the above. And I'm able to connect with you all. This probably would have never happened. So God is God is good and he's awesome. Yeah, and I get excited talking about him because all the things that he's done, you know, he does things that's not that's not in this mind frame. You know, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. 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 Wow. Yeah, it's so it's it's an opportunity to reset ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, the refocus, reset. And oh man, I love that. I concur. I am not living up to my best potential, Lord. You already know. But I thank you, Father, for your loving kindness, your unlimited grace to continually give me opportunity to work in your vineyard to get better and better as we go by and by. Thank you. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. I was waiting, hoping evangelists... Uh, Evangelist, good luck. He's uh, seems like he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. There he is. Evangelist, good luck, my brother. Uh, please, sir. Uh, we would like to hear some words from Nigeria. Please, sir. Yeah. Hallelujah. Also, James said about forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the thing, a child of God. I could remember when I began a band, it is my song, We are no blood to anyone. We are no blood to anybody. That can kill, that can kill your ministry. We are no blood to anybody. It can kill your ministry. So when I look at what God was saying right back, then I say, God, does it mean if I have bloody to anybody, that means I will never make heaven. He said, my son, you will never make heaven. I look at it, I say, I will never have bloody to anybody. Love. When you love someone, you do all things. When you love someone, you will forgive easily. When you love someone, that was the Jesus saying it. 
charity, when no matter how you speak, no matter how many people you have healed, without charity, you're going to wear. You don't have love in your heart, you're going to wear. I wanted to speak to her with a tongue of prophecies. If I want to speak with a tongue of angels, without charity, I don't know where. There is one thing God is pointing out. You can be a wounded soldier. A wounded soldier is someone who the enemy has attacked. Don't mind, but says charity. You must have charity. If not, you go nowhere. A wounded soldier can be attacked by the enemy. A wounded soldier can challenge the enemy. Because in you, there is someone at the back of you. Jesus said, I will always be with you in your all situations. I will always be with you. Go out and preach the gospel. Be a disciple of me. I, that Peter, I will make you a picture of man. You will no longer fish. <laughs> Fish in this ocean, but you will fish man. So everyone should understand that God wants those who will love each other. When I look at what, uh, when I was praying, I, I remember where I was. In, uh, in, in some time, I was in the Christ, he preached the gospel. I still, I remember the place to stay. Christ, he on the gospel. I wanted to look at those who are not all you are seeing that are able. Many of them, you can, you can be a help to them. You should do. It's a big this art of helping people, loving people. You see on the street, love them, help them out. Because the Bible says, blessed is the hand that giveth and the hand that taketh. I never see uh, Jesus was saying, what good will it be to you if you still do good things to those that did good things to you? If you if someone dash you money and you go back and dash that person money, what benefit do you get from it? Go to God. You are a wounded soldier. Stand firm. Don't give up. Do not go down because of challenges of the world. There must be a trial to you as a soldier. You, the enemy will wound you. Yes, in, but don't give up. I have a love. Stand firm, because that is what God wants from you. Because the kingdom of God, the Bible says that has many things on the way. There are many things that you ask for. He said, if they could not love me, they would never love you. Remember, Jesus said, you are not of the world. And because you are not of the world, you will not love the things of the world. You are a soldier Try to remain that soldier Christ has called you. Be ready to encounter anything on the way. Be ready to face any challenges because the enemy will always attack. The book of Psalm 147 as 3. Book of, book of Psalm 147 as 3. Just to be obedient to him. Just depend only on him, and he will bring it to pass. I, I will read the, the, the sentence I made. I said, since Christ need divine, since Christians need divine healing in order to stand and fight on, 
es Amen. Amen. Good. Thank you, brother. We are soldiers. We are soldiers. You know, I couldn't help but think, uh, uh, Minister Katrina, I couldn't help but think about this song we used to sing back in the day. You depend in Christ. As a soldier, you depend in Christ. I encourage this. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. I'm going to have to step in. Your, your audio is coming in and out. I apologize. We got it, brother. We are soldiers in God's army, and we got to keep on fighting. Thank you, brother. Your audio is just flipping in and out. Um, but we got your point. Thank you. I got to share this with you. I just found this. Uh, this is a beautiful piece. Uh, check this out. I don't. Here we go. For those of you who are young and don't know, very recent period in our history, people who were all color could not buy out in front of the bus, could not drink the lunch counter. They had water fountains that had white on one, one fountain and they colored on another. So we pretty much passed that, but it's people's parts we are now trying to change. We broke down the obvious legal system to it, but it's kind of hard to make people change inside. Love is a hard thing to come by sometimes, isn't it? Oh, we are soldiers in the army. And we got to fight. We got to battle. Oh, yes, we have to fight. We got to hold. 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 We got
We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. That bloodstained banner belongs to Christ, our Savior. So we are soldiers in God's army. <laughs> and we have to hold up his bloodstained banner. That's our flag. That's the banner we hold up. It was not about this rioting, this looting. It's about love, right? It's about love. It's about forgiveness, the things, the topics that we talked about today. I thank God that he has been able to reset me, David. <laughs> He's reset me. Look at that little baby. I look like a grandson. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to focus on my negatives, but I got a lot of them. And I thank God that he's reset me. And I'm going to tell you this, Pastor Gant, my pastor, I was hanging out with him today. And uh, he, he showed me an illustration I'll never forget. I want to share it with you. And then uh, we're going to uh, see, we'll wrap it up, I guess. Um, Pastor Gant said, David, the repentance looks like this. He said, this is what repentance looks like. We're, we're driving, it's thunderstorms here. Rain is coming on an angle, like spurts. You know, it's really bad. It makes you think a tornado or hurricane is on its way, right? I mean, Dave, you hear. I mean, it's, it was looking bad for a little while there. And he said, this is how repentance looks. See, you can walk into the wind. The wind's at your head, and it's hard. Things are coming at you. Things are flying in your face. Things are all in your way. A repentance says, turn and go back the other way. Now the wind's at your back, and things are flowing a lot better for you when it's at your back. And he says, that's God. That's what he said. He said, that's God. When the wind's at your back, that's God. And that's, I said, Pastor, that's a beautiful illustration. Thank you, man. James, who do we have here? Oh, this is my grandson, Everett. We wanted the younger generation to get more involved with this prayer meeting, so I figured I'd bring him on board. No, I just wanted to show off my grandson for a minute. I hope I, I didn't distract you. He is cute. He is a baby doll. He's beautiful. All right, good. Uh, anybody else? I'm going to open up this line here. Anybody else have anything? Brothers and sisters, those of you who are still viewing, after we close, we have some of the greatest times <laughs> just ministering to one another. Uh, but anybody have anything you want to share? All the lines are open. No, I just want to That's say that just for this opportunity. It's a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to continue to spread the word of God and and do it in such a way where we can reach a broad nations because that's what God told us to do. Go ye out and make disciples. Um, we're fishermen. So we need to begin to cast out our um, pole and let's, let's reel them in. <laughs> Amen. Yes, cast out your net, cast your net. Thank you, very good. Mm -hmm. you know, very good. Something, Say something. That also comes to my mind is the whole matter of humility. I can remember John Dawson an evangelist telling a story about how they were in Argentina uh, trying to spread the love of Jesus, you know, the, the truth of the good news of who Jesus is. And it was during the World Cup in 1978, and people were resistant. Nobody was listening. They were getting mocked at, and, and uh, it, it, was, it was very hard going. And as they prayed together, they believed that the Lord uh, led them to make a show of humility uh, that that humility was uh, would break down the, that attitude of pride the spirit of pride that was in that particular city and they got in the middle of the city and together they got on their knees together everybody in the group from various backgrounds and they 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 got on their knees together and humbled themselves before god and before each other and something broke something broke and and um that, that pride broke. And after that, they started getting in good conversations with people. People were listening. People's hearts were open. And, and the Holy Spirit moved upon that. Um, and, and that's because they acted in an opposite spirit to the spirit that, that, uh, of that particular city that they were in. 
and the Lord honored their faithfulness and their humility and, and broke that and uh, opened things up. And um, somebody needs to hear that. The Lord wants you to act in the opposite spirit to, to your surroundings around you, to the spirit in, in the area that you're in. Act in an opposite spirit. and The Lord will honor that. Don't act in the same spirit. Act in an opposite spirit. Amen. Amen. Pastor Terry. Um, adding to what was said, I think a fervent prayer of a righteous person prevailed much. And I think it's, it's high time that we, when we pray, we may be fervent in our prayer, look at our lifestyle, and with sincerity and humbleness, let the Lord, you know, answer our prayer now. It's about time that we really need, as men of God and as people of God, we really need to get to our knees. And now is the time. And as you say, you re put the reset button. You have more time now with less disruptions around you to focus on the one that is ultimate answers, that he has all the answers. And uh, I just want to go to Romans 10, 9. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, if you're listening to this, uh, this whole uh, podcast at the moment, and you find that, you know, something has touched you. I ask you right now, as we stand in agreement, and just when, when the pastor's going to pray now and uh, call for the call, it, I was a Hindu. I didn't know God. I, I, I was very spiritual, but I didn't have peace. The peace that Jesus gives you is the ultimate peace. So as by uh, Reverend Rhodes going to surrender, I ask you to surrender to the Lord. Listen to me, uh, from a 23, I'm uh, 55 years at the moment. If I only knew that earlier, that what Jesus can do, I will change my heart long time ago. So thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Plomo? And uh, just as the time that we found ourselves, we need to I actually reset that in our, uh, sit alone, sit and 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 let's start to retrospect, retrospect where we are, where we came from, what is the ultimate thing God wants us to do, what what is the purpose of our life, what is I I the, what 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 God wants to do through us. What God wants to do through our family. What God wants to do through our ministry. And I, now you, we will find out that there are some things, some, I mean, some of the things we should be doing, we are not doing it, definitely. Uh, those things that are, that, are, that are very important of importance will now begin to put things well in the right perspective. Uh, so what to do, what we prioritize according to God's plans for our life. And uh, I'm, I'm quite sure as God, I mean, as, as, as we do this in the Holy Spirit, actually is going to help us along the way and boom, you're going to see a lot of new things, new ways I, I to approach issues, reaching out to our people. So that even the gospel they said, how do we reach out to people? I mean, there's going to be a lot of things I done around here, but I this is the time actually God is using for us to really reset ourselves, our family, our ministry, so that we can go all out for His glory, His kingdom. Amen. 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 And evangelist. Uh, evangelist, you with us? I just want to say that I'm with you. I'm with you. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you clearly. Yes. I just want to say that um, uh, we have said everything we ought to do, but I want to add something here. Prayer. Prayer is the key. Jesus went out to the mountain to pray. Coming back, he saw Peter and the disciples sleeping. He said, Can't you wait? 
for a while. Don't you know that the days are evil? Pray without ceasing. And that is the only way we can fulfill our, our obligation. The mandate God has given to us need prayer. Because let me just share this. I, I said that when I was praying, you know, I, I still opened my eyes to see how the kingdom of darkness is expanding while we are sleeping. So we need to pray and expand the kingdom of God. And the Lord God Almighty will be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. If you are watching this broadcast, <clears throat> this program, and you are wondering how uh, you can get connected to God's kingdom, uh, as Pastor Terry said, it doesn't matter where you come from. We're all from various backgrounds, shades of color. We all come from different parts of the world. But Jesus is everywhere, and he's waiting at the door, and he says in his word, all you have to do is invite him in. Extend your hand, extend your heart, and he will come in to your life. There's a prayer that Pastor Terry said that we will go over. I would ask that you recite this prayer with me, and Jesus will come into your life. It goes like this, and please recite it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and invite you to come into my heart. I invite you to come into my life. I want to trust you. I want to follow you. Please, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The scripture says, the scripture says that the angels are rejoicing. When you give your life to God, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Hallelujah. All right, that's it. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Uh, those of you that are online, I ask that you please share this. Let this word circulate around the globe. Uh, we've been getting anywhere from 500 to 1,000 views. Uh, I'm not big on numbers, but I love to see how the gospel of the Lord is traveling across the globe. Please share this 5, 10, 20 times in various groups across the world. Get the word out. Let the people see what's going on. Thank you so much. And then we look forward to being with you on Friday. And hopefully this group will be back with us on Friday. We love you so much. Bless your hearts. Yep. It was an honor to participate. Thank you.